All right, so in the next, last video, we set up the logic to handle the new way of getting our weapon actor over to our player character, but now we need to be able to handle the logic for our player character to be the owner of that new target actor. So that will handle logic that's being passed for they shot a character, they shot another player who is the owner responsible for that kill or something like that. Um, so. In the Weapon Master Blueprint is where we're going to set up this logic to handle the pawn handling. Um, now, there's many other ways to be doing this in terms of just getting a weapon in the on the character's hand and just shooting it. Um, there's tons of other tutorials out there that will mention how to do it. But, I mean, this is the way that I'm setting this up because we are going to be playing with other players. So, we need to handle, like, who's owning that actor who's firing that projectile who's doing this and who and it has to run all on the server so doing it for a single player character is a lot different than doing it for um, multiple characters here so um, with that being said let's just continue on with um, adding in a couple of functions that are going to handle the logic of assigning the actor the actor's new owner so one of the things we can do is we can add in a new function and let's call this the set owning pawn. We'll add a new function and we'll call this one attach to owner holster. Or for simply put, this is just going to attach it to the hand socket for right now. Um, so I want to make a new category to keep things organized so I can hide this defaults for all the other logic I don't want to work with right now. And I'm going to call this pawn handling. And this one, I can attach that. All right, so let's work with setting up the ownership first. So when this logic is called, one of the first things that needs to happen is we need to find out who is the character that called this logic. Uh, we can call this the owning pawn for this uh, input variable. And when you add a variable, you would find the character owner that's going to call back to our third person character blueprint. So if I did third person character reference. And after that, I would want to end up finding a comparison. So I would need a variable for the third person character blueprint as well, because I need to know if that's the same actor. If it's not, it must be a different actor that's being assigned. Uh, we can add a new variable with all this same logic right here, or we can just drag this out, promote it to a variable, and this new variable now inherits what we had already, what this was assigned to. So let's just do a quick rename. We'll call this the owning pawn. And I want to disconnect this right now because I'm not going to be using it just yet, but we also need this owning pawn variable to be a replication with the rep notify. So this will actually notify like this is a special replication that's going on for this character. Um, so with that being done, the rep notify added, you'll see that we now have an on rep owning pawn. So from there, let's drag down and we need to find, let's uh, add a branch first. So hold down B, I'll add the branch. And what this branch needs to ask is, is this owning pawn not equal to this guy? So if these two aren't the same, and this is true, then we need to set this guy to be the owner. So we'll add this actor and we'll do a set owner. And now whoever this person is, is now going to be the owner of this actor blueprint. So compile and save that. Now that we have our set owner, set owning pawn done, let's go to attaching to the owner host holster. So pretty much the same logic that we had written earlier um, with just uh, construction script here. Just taking the skeletal mesh and just attaching it to uh, the socket was pretty much the same thing. Um, since I'm already back here in the third person character blueprint, um, it would be good just to go ahead and I, since this is the socket name, I'm going to delete that since that was familiar. Since we know this is the socket that we want to use, again, we can just drag this out, promote it to a variable. And this variable should inherit, right after we name it here, it's called right hand weapon socket. 
Okay, never mind. I thought it was going to work, but sometimes I'm proven wrong here. But we're going to need to grab that name in a minute. Let's just undo that so I can actually copy that name since I know this is the socket name we want. Let's just get a new name. Let's paste that and compile it. And let's put that in as this variable's weapon socket since now these names are working in conjunction. So this variable is referencing that actual socket on the character's skeletal mesh on this hand. All right, so now we have that socket in place. We're going to rewrite some of the attachment logic, but and this is actually going to be handled within this uh, weapon actor. So when this actor is called, we need to find out who has the, or if it is valid, and who is, it, who is it that we're checking against that it is they're valid or not. Well, it'll be our owning pawn. So once that's called, we're going to do an attach to, attaching to, uh, nope, we don't want to attach it to an actor. We want to attach it to a component. So let's go attach to components. Nope, that gave us the same thing here. We're not trying to attach it to an actor. We've got a scene component here. So let's try it one more time with attach to weapon mesh. There, and it gave us our scene component. So this is telling us that our weapon mesh will attach to this owning pawn. We can't have it as the parent. We need something it's got to attach to. But from that owning pawn, we can get the skeletal mesh. Oh, I guess that didn't work. Let's do get mesh. There we are. There's our mesh that we're using. So that's the actual third person character mesh that's being called. Let's delete these other two nodes since we don't need those anymore. Let's rearrange this a little bit more. Okay. So what's happening here is we have attached this weapon actor mesh, the skeleton mesh here is supposed to attach to this skeleton. Now it needs a place to go to. Well, we've already made a weapon socket on this character's arm for right hand weapon socket. And just remember this owning pawn is, the, is that blueprint. So it's kind of like the same thing as doing uh, get owner cast to and then finding the, finding the components that exist within that character's blueprint components. So let's drag that out. And let's call the right and weapon socket. There we are. And let's attach that in. So now when this object spawns in the world, it should find this weapon socket and attach to it. Uh, we want it to not keep relative offset. We actually want it to snap and keep world scale when it's actually spawned in the world. And once it actually spawns in the game world, we need to make sure that this weapon actor is assigned to that owning pawn. Uh, um, excuse me. We actually need to make sure that the owning pawn now understands that the primary weapon that's equipped or the equipped weapon is this target actor blueprint. So we can drag this down and we can do equipped weapon. We can do a set. Let's bring that up here. And we can set it as the target actor of this blueprint. So we'll do a get a reference to self. And this looks a little bit like hard to read at times. So let's just double click on these wires here. Let's just kind of reorganize really quickly. Let's keep things clean. All right, so almost done here. So now that we need something that's gonna happen when it's not valid, and that's where our rep notify is gonna take care of that for us. So let's jump over to the on rep notify that was made earlier. So on rep on owning pawn. And let's handle the logic that's gonna call this. So when the on rep notify happens, we need to find out a branch node here. We need to find out if the owning pawn is valid. If he's not, then we need to make sure that there's something that actually makes the variable of it turn to being valid. So on the owning pawn, we need to find out, is it valid? For the function and so if it is then we need to set up a needs and update on the owner rep notify so it'll call this again now let's add another variable this one will be a bool and let's name this bool the uh, needs 
needs attached update on uh, misspelling that here apologize on rep oh. okay now that we have that mouthful of bool written in we don't need a git we need a set or we need both excuse me this is the more a little bit crazier logic but okay let's do an and statement basically this is checking that if it's own, if it is valid then we need to find out if this is false if it's false if it's true then it will need to be set to false and the authority will need to now it will now need to execute something for the client. So we'll do a has switch authority. It'll go through another branch. And this time it'll be the client that actually goes to the branch of the remote. And a couple of things need to happen here. So we need to find out the owning pawn. We need to find out what's the equipped weapon. And is this equipped weapon equal to this actor right here? So get a reference to self. And let's plug that in. Now, if it's true, then don't do anything. If it's not, then we'll need to do a one more branch statement. Holding down B and clicking. And we'll need to find out here what's the slot type. And we don't have the slot activated in here, but we can add that in. So let's add in our variable. We'll call this the slot type. And what's going to drive our slot type is that enumeration that we had made earlier. So we'll go E underscore, let's go weapon, inventory slots. Let's bring that in, do a git. And we're going to git holsters. We'll need one more function that's going to follow this. And the function that we're going to have to write for this is going to be back in the third person character <laughs> logic. So like I said, there's a lot of jumping back and forth. Um, we're already 12 minutes in. Let's go ahead and let's finish out this logic here so the next video we can actually get the weapon to start firing. Okay, so <clears throat> let's jump back to the third person character blueprint and we need to make the logic for getting the holstered weapon. So we have our default weapons and we need to grab a new function that's going to drive our holstered weapons. So let's get holstered weapons. These are any of the weapons that are not being used. <laughs> Sorry. And we need to do a return node for this. It's not going to be a bool in just a minute here. And we'll need an enumeration for this. So that's going to be the slot type that came from the weapon. So let's add a new input. Let's do a slot call this an enumeration, do a weapon, inventory slots, we'll do a select, and basically this is saying, okay, what are the actors that are going to be inheriting these slots for the weapons? We're going to need to make a new actor for each one of these, but it'll be all based on the base weapon blueprint. So with the equipped weapon, we're basically going to be cloning this a few times. So let's grab this. Let's just duplicate it. Let's rename it to melee weapon. Let's duplicate that. We'll call this the primary weapon. And one more time for the secondary. Alright, so 
So let's add these in for our new three weapons. And none's going to be none since we have no weapons. We'll probably just be like, you know, something where we're just walking around. The weapons are all on our backs or, you know, holstered. Let's attach those in. And let's turn value. This is going to need to be our base weapon blueprint that it's talking to. So let's go weapon master blueprint that we've been making. And that'll be driven through here. So now if we need to make sure that this function, we don't need it to be called through certain things. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a pure function. So what we've been seeing is we've been, we've been doing functions that have actually been, um, let's compile and save. We've been doing functions that we've actually been needing logic to call. So when we do a function, like for instance, this is a function, a pure function, that's what we just got done making. So back in our base, back in our weapon master blueprint, in our owning pawn, we can call our function that we built by get holstered weapons. And now here's our pure function that we had made just a minute ago. Our slot type is going to drive this. And we need to make sure that the cell factor that's being called here is the same that matches the weapon that's currently equipped in the slot. So let's do an equals. Let's see, let's go here from equals object. I'm just going to flip these around for organizational purposes and let's plug that into the branch. All right, almost done here. And now we're going to be driving. Once this gets done going through, we're going to be end up sending that to one of the functions we've already been working on is we're going to attach it to the owner holster. So when this becomes true, attach it, pile and save, and we're almost done with the attached to owner holster. Or, um, excuse me. We got that one set ready to go. Um, now we need to go back to here and that bool that we were missing before, that's gonna be set up here. And this will become true. All right, now that our logic is ready to go, we can actually I believe we can probably play test this right now. And we don't have any weapon just yet. So in the next video, we're going to get this guy holding his new weapon actor. We got all the logic written for our weapons. So it should be just a little bit more of getting him actually aim and shoot this thing with shooting an explosive and we should be good to go.